Welcome back to The Lounge. Today we have with us recording super mega star, artist, blogger, writer, mm -hmm. and mom, Sarah Hickman. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Oh yes. We have, well we did Stay have some, we've had moms in here. You're not the first mom. You're not, wow. you're but not I, our first. Am I the first mom with a beer? Yes. Yeah. 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 Ooh, that's kind of good. Are you? You're not gonna boot? I thought you might. What's boot? Does that mean belts? Yeah, no, throw up. Oh no, okay. I haven't had enough to do that, but right. maybe. Mmm, mm, it's kind of good. Mm. Now, so we've got you in here to talk about ostensibly um, music and parenthood and stuff. So uh, one of the amazing things about your career is that you've managed to be successful both writing for grown-ups and for kids. No matter where I've been, people have said, "Pare it down, do one thing." And I, I like doing lots of things. I'm a, a major multitasker. I always find that, you know, when I'm writing for kids, like, um, it, after a little while, like, all the bad words build up, and then I need to write something, like, for grown-ups. Does well, that happen to you? Like, you write something for kids, and you got to do something naughty. You know, I have to say that's very true, because uh, I came from doing adult music, where I would sometimes get a little maybe risque, mm -hmm. I'd say inappropriate words, mm -hmm. and talk about sexuality and things like that that are fun to talk about. And then I would go and work with children, and yes, you have to... Um, you have to be appropriate, and and I think I do a very good job of that. And then yes, there is this buildup, which either my husband gets or this I go out on stage at an adult show and things come out, and people who've only seen me at children's shows who come to an adult show at night are a little shocked. Can, can we can we talk some about sexuality? Sure, you... I love sexuality. Stop. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, what we should do. <laughs> Instead of that, is maybe do some music. Oh, okay. How about that? How about hey, you start? Hey, that's a good segue. You're let's, smart. Let's play a song. Okay. Would you play a song mm -hmm. for us? Mm-hmm. Cool. One, two, three, four. Life's become a great big list Of things to do and buy and fix Night we pass out before ten Are we ever gonna have sex again? I looked for your dick today Seeing as it had gone away Well, it ain't been you since who knows when Are we ever gonna have sex again? Are we used to be? Triple X rated, but look at us now. We're so domesticated, don't you hate it? Hey, whatever happened to Babe and Stud? <laughs> Too much KFC and Bud. Well, I shouted out into the wind. Oh, are we ever gonna have sex again? Everybody, wet your whistle and blow. Just think ring of fire. You can move your bodies, that's all right.
feel happy and warm inside. That's and I've only had like three sips. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Excellent. And that was, <laughs> that was a hell of a song too, which made me feel sort of warm inside. Good. In a way, but then also empty. Did it make you feel like it's true that you, you, you know, in your own relationship? And I think a lot of dads have this question, are we ever going to have sex again? Um, I Parents? Know, uh, I no, I mean, it's just ah, like to me. crazy, like <laughs> rabbits, As, you know, after the kids were born, yeah, it was just... Yeah, there's that weird downtime where it's not good. I think it's something... It's ouchy, it hurts a little bit, it, you gotta wait till the healing, and then you can have sex again, and then it's awesome. At least at our house. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about parenting okay. a little bit. Um, so I read that you, um, for a little while, you were a parenting coach. Yes. Uh, I, I took the parenting classes and liked them so much that I went back and got certified to be an instructor. And it's a group called Redirecting Children's Behavior. Mm -hmm. But I think the key element of it is, is that's really teaching you. It's really pulling the parents in and redirecting you. But we call it that to get the parents in there because everybody thinks it's their kid's fault, right? You know, right. Or their, their spouse's fault. And you get in there and you really recognize that a family is a democracy. And a lot of parents... Uh, do things old school like how their parents treated them so you know say you have to go to the store and this is old school you'd say okay let's go and you grab your kid and you put him in the seat and you buckle him in and you go and the kid has no idea where they're going they don't mm -hmm. know why they've just been strapped down and it's really disrespectful mm -hmm. I mean how would you like it if your wife came in and said we're going and took you out and roped you onto the top of the car and drove you somewhere you, well, you might like that but so what we do is we prepare the child we say okay um, tomorrow we're going to be going on an after-school trip and then the next morning you say, today's the day we're going on a school trip. And then after school you go pick them up and say, in 30 minutes we're going to go on a school trip. So you're constantly reminding them of what's coming up. They feel respected. And when it's time to go, they willingly go. Even if it's to the store or the bank or to go see the dentist or the doctor, you've given them the opportunity to feel respected. Do you, do you want to run this uh, company? <laughs>